Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to take a look at a higher order derivative. What does that mean? Well, it means higher than one. A second order, third order, fourth order derivatives are called higher order derivatives. So, what does it look like? When we start with a function, let's say x is a function of t, that means x is the independent variable, Oh, I should say x is the dependent variable and t is the independent variable. So t can change and then x will change accordingly. So here's a function where x is a function of t and it's t cubed plus 5t squared plus 6t plus 4. So what do we get when we take the first derivative with respect to time? So we're taking it with respect to the variable which is called the independent variable of the function. And if we take the first derivative, it's called the ddt, the derivative with respect to time of the function x, which is dx dt. So that's how we read it. It's the derivative with respect to time of the function x. And by now, we should know how to take the derivative. So we have 3t squared plus 5 times 2, which is 10t to the first power, plus 6t to the zero power. We don't write t to the zero power, so we just write 6 and the derivative of a constant is 0. So that ends up being 3t squared plus 10t plus 6. That's the first derivative of our original function. So what happens when we take the second derivative, which means the derivative of the derivative? So the second derivative is the ddt, the derivative with respect to time of dx dt. Of course, dx dt was the derivative of the function. And we write that as d squared x dt squared. That's the second derivative of x with respect to time. And so again, we take the derivative, we get two times three, which is six times t to the first power, plus 10 t to the zero power, so we just write plus 10, and the derivative of the constant six is zero. So now we take the third derivative. The third derivative is the derivative with respect to time of the derivative with respect to time of the derivative of x with respect to time. So it's the derivative with respect to time of the second derivative of x with respect to time, which gives us the third derivative with respect to time, and that's how we write that. So again, now we take the derivative of the second derivative, which was 60 plus 10, and so we get just 6, because the derivative of 10 is 0, and the de derivative of 6t is 60 to the 0 power. We don't write t to the 0 power, because that's equal to 1, and we just write 6. What happens when we take the derivative again? This is now the fourth derivative. So we take the derivative with respect to time of the derivative with respect to time of the derivative with respect to time of the derivative of x with respect to time. Or the derivative with respect to time of the third derivative of x with respect to time, which is then the fourth derivative with respect to time. And the derivative of a constant six gives us zero. And of course, on the fifth and the sixth and the seventh derivative, they will all be zeros because when you take the derivative of zero, you get zero again. Sometimes people think that this is a lot of stuff to write, gets cumbersome, and there's a shorthand method of writing that. We can write the first derivative of x as simply as x prime, the second derivative of x double prime, the, the third derivative as x triple prime, and the fourth derivative, because then they don't want to put too many primes, because then you kinda, it's hard to see how many primes there are, then they write x to the fourth power with little parentheses around it to indicate that it's not an exponent. So that makes it the fourth derivative of x. Of course, when you write it like this, you do not know if it's respect to time or respect to some other variable, so that you have to get that out of the context of the problem. If you write it like this, then it's clear that we're taking the derivative with respect to time. But then, of course, if you see the function and you see that t is the independent variable and x is the dependent variable, then when you write x prime, they assume that that means that you're taking it with respect to time. And so that is how we look at higher order derivatives.